What was the question? Hey guys, it's Nikki here with my wonderful husband, John. Uh, this month we're doing the book of the month kind of review together because this is a book that he suggested that we listened to together. I did read a little bit as an ebook because I wasn't paying close enough attention when we started it and I was very confused. <laughs> um, but now we're going to kind of give you our thoughts on it and I'm really excited to see what he has to say because I know we got different things out of this book. So for me, at least at first, I took it very surface level and so I was really enjoying the fact that the story was literally just this demon from hell writing as a concerned uncle and politician to his nephew, kind of describing the way that he should be doing his job because he wants him to succeed. And then once we started talking, I realized there's like a little bit more going on. The reason you suggested this book was because you had read it in college and gotten yeah. a little bit out of it. Yeah, so it just it seemed a bit more than just a, a story. I mean, it is written by C.S. Lewis, so I mean, there's going to be certain undertones to it um but yeah looking at the uh looking as a tiny demon wormwood the subject of uh the screw tape letters and seeing him grow uh seeing the story from like almost the antagonist point of view and uh <laughs> wormwood's journey through uh corrupting humans and when he fails at corrupting humans he's actually making their lives better and stuff like that. And I know for myself, like I had already mentioned, I did read it with a little bit of the ebook as well. But both times you've read it, you've read it using the audiobook. Yes. And we listened to the one where John Cleese is the narrator. And I know you had like some very specific takeaways of using him as the narrator. Like what did it do for you? <clears throat> it really brought the character screw tape to life. I mean, in my mind it was just John Cleese, but just I don't know, more demony but uh the the confidence that he brought to the table with his with the audiobook and uh the disappointment when he, <laughs> when uh, wormwood screwed up you could you could just feel it you could feel the disappointment and it was humorous at points it wasn't just it wasn't it was serious topics but uh seeing it the point of view not only from screw tape but john cleese as screw tape um it was funny at parts. Like we we were listening to it together, and we were like we laughed out loud. Like really, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I totally agree. I really feel like John Cleese breathed life into the character. That is going to kind of lead me to like the formatting of the story. I personally love how the story was written. Um, just taking it again, very surface level this first time around. It was written as letters from Screw Tape to his nephew Wormwood. And I personally love entry-based writing. <laughs> it's such a great way to control the pacing in my mind because it this book spanned several years, but um, the years or months or days would pass between each letter, and you'd be able to see it was the focus wasn't about Wormwood's process or something. It was more of the result of Worm, what Wormwood was doing, and then. And then the analysis of what Wormo was doing from Screw Tape, and I mean he was doing it wrong apparently, but we're yeah. <laughs> taking Screw Tape's advice differently and applying it in different ways. And when does this book take place? It was like World War Two or World War One. I'm not entirely sure. There was I a war, think, and that was a big thing. I think World War Two, because I remember C.S. Lewis was very like condemning of it. But yeah, going back to that, because it was taking place in that time and there's specific events throughout that time that affected Wormwood and his, whoever he was assigned to, um, it was so nice that the book was able to keep up the pace, even though it's a long time frame from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. And just the way you worded that, um, I'm going to jump onto it a little bit, because in terms of like how it was written, that was another thing I found like really effective. The fact that it was presenting like Wormwood and Screwtape in his younger days as like the the equivalent to Hell's version of Guardian Angels. Yeah, like it was a, it like, was a mentor. I liked it because it, it almost seemed that uh, it was a job. Like yeah, it was just, like, I mean, yeah, it was their purpose, but, oh, you mean like... Like Wormwood specifically yeah. was like the 
guardian angel oh, yeah, yeah. of this human. Every demon is assigned their human to uh, eventually bring, not even bring over to their Attempt side. to corrupt. Yeah, because that was the purpose of the demons was to just eat or feed on yeah. the humans, using them for their purpose. It wasn't to become a demon themselves. It was just to corrupt their soul. Yeah, and which leads into like the undertones that John mentioned earlier, like taken at surface value, it's just this humorous conversation between an uncle and his nephew for this really bureaucratic job. Yeah. But when you look at it, as with a lot of C.S. Lewis's other writings, there are some very uh, Christian undertones to it. And as someone who myself didn't really grow up in a Christian household, that part of the story didn't add as much to the experience for me. But I know when you listen to it originally and listening to it again, you got a lot out of that part. Oh, yeah. It isn't. It's more blatant than a bunch of his other stuff. Uh, C.S. Lewis. Uh, but I wouldn't say it is straight up saying it's Christian because they don't even refer to God as God, but it's very obvious. They yeah. always refer to as the enemy. And so it's, it is left purposely vague. And I think it does a, a lot for um, the readability for other people to mm-hmm. read it because it's not, <laughs> I mean, they talk about church and all this stuff, but like it's all you only think it's Christian because you're making assumptions. There's nothing straight up saying Mm -hmm. that it's Christian, at least from what I remember. Like, it referred to their leader as the father below. Oh, yeah. So, like, indicating hell but not saying hell. Like you said, they called what we're assuming is God to be the the enemy. enemy. That could be angels or that could just be other, yeah, just somebody from the other side. Yeah, like, like you said, I did like that it was purposely vague because as I really never felt like I was getting preached at, but I was picking up on the undertone. And I think that was in part to try to pull in some of the younger audience who may not be as inclined to read something more philosophical related to yeah, certain values. I think depending on how you go into that book, you'll get different things out of it. Because uh, between um, screw tape and talking about the other side... Uh, you didn't just see the contempt that he had for the other side. It was, there's explanations of why. Mm -hmm. And he saw them a little different, the other side, his enemy, a little different than themselves. They're simply using humans. Mm -hmm. And he didn't understand why he was, why the enemy was doing what he was doing. Mm -hmm. It just seemed pointless. It was the justification of their own actions that I really enjoyed because it wasn't just like, being evil for evil's sake. Yeah. It was, it gave context of why they're doing it. So now that we're done with the body of the story, um, I'd like to touch on like specific takeaways. So like, was there something specific that stood out to you that you liked? Was there something specific that stood out to you that you disliked? I liked the, um, like bringing in for some people, the supernatural, to justify certain feelings that we feel every day, um, ju- justifying or at least explaining certain actions that you see. Um, they touched really early on about people within the church and how the corruption happens there. Um, and even if that is thinking that they're holier than thou and screw tape thought that was a wonderful thing and was like, keep it up. Like that, that's where, <laughs> that's where the corruption happens. It mm-hmm. isn't some foreign force or something. It's um, taking your own insecurities and uh, prejudices and thinking about it. and <laughs> they, Projecting it onto the people you're talking to. Yeah. And uh, so it was really fun seeing the different areas of the different tactics that Screwtape was suggesting and how it correlated with how a lot of us feel every day. Uh, <laughs> it is fiction. So like I'm not saying like this explains it. And you're not going to say that you're going to get so angry that you turn into a centipede. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was a demon. I'm not a demon. It was, the thing that stood out to me was for science or searching for answers or trying to disprove um, demons and mm-hmm. angels. And it surprised me when Screw Tape was like, don't let him think about it. Like, don't have him try to prove it wrong because he, he will find out. Or the subject will find out and will be brought over to the enemy, which would be gone mm-hmm. or something. Because it's like, if you're searching, 
you will find it. And so you need to keep them distracted. You need to keep them like hooked up on themselves. Don't let them look outward. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was, uh, it was really interesting. That was my favorite parts were the tactics. Mm-hmm. Also, after the confident tactics given by John Cleese's screw tape, and then <laughs> the next chapter starts out and it's just, it begins with a sigh. It's just like, oh, Wormwood, <laughs> what have you done? And you can just, that was my, no, that was my favorite part. As the chapter's progressing, hearing screw tape and John Cleese get more and more frustrated with the actions of Wormwood and how it's going south. And he's just watching this fire burn, like, so slowly. <laughs> and he's just, he's, he's destroyed at the end. Not like, you know, he gives a speech at the end, but he's just so disappointed in himself and in Wormwood. And it's just... Was there something he didn't like about the book? Uh, the ending. Because it ended. Like, I was listening to it and I was having a good time. And yeah, it, it was abrupt. Yeah, it uh, it made me realize that the focus really wasn't on the humans. It was just about screw tape. So like going in there, not thinking that you're going to be following a story of a guy or girl against the demons or against hell itself or something. It really is just a job to them. And it just ended very just ended <laughs> and I was like what that's it yeah. yeah so that was the uh yeah I really did enjoy how that final speech kind of projected like screw tapes now insecurities about kind of the future generation because of how poorly Wormwood did but also like his fear that I guess that it was him that led Wormwood astray yeah, he blamed himself and uh yeah, his speech, it was like, a, it almost seemed like a graduation ceremony that he was talking to. Yep. And all through it, um, he was complaining about everything. Like you could see, you could read or hear that something was deeply troubling screw tape, even though he was presenting, uh, like congratulating all these new demons and he's complaining about the food and like the terrible state of the, the school and everything like that. And it just seemed like very out of left field. But then you realize like he suffered a major defeat and he's still trying to save face. Um, and so even though he's congratulating these demons uh, for graduating, you could kind of hear it in his voice and in the text that uh, he didn't, he himself didn't have that much hope. And uh, at the end of it, he was like complimenting the wine, which is like the one thing that's going to be intoxicating him to, for feeling this way. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> what did you dislike, but... <laughs> oh, yeah, the ending. <laughs> and with that, I think we should jump into the wrap-up. I feel like we've been talking for a while, and we've been you've been saying a lot of really interesting stuff, so I don't really want to cut it out, so <laughs> should probably wrap up instead. For me, this book was about a three out of five. Um, I really, really enjoyed how it was written. I loved the pacing, especially with the audiobook. I loved listening to John Cleese represent screw tape and just all of the emotion he brought to the table with it. However, I don't really think I'm the intended audience for this. Um, Like, this is something I think our kids will read, and I'll encourage them to read it, because there is a lot to be taken from it. As far as the surface story goes, it was incredibly entertaining, but I just, I didn't get a lot out of the subtext. And I mean, part of that is because as soon as I realized there was subtext going on, I had these horrible flashbacks to high school where it's like, you're going to make me say this is imagery, an allegory. So I mean, a little bit of it was just like me being me. But overall, it was pretty good. And I'm not going to give it a star rating, but I would say I would recommend anybody read this at least once. It's not that long. And like, that's saying something... (laughs) For me. The audiobook was about three hours, so it's probably 200 pages or so. Yeah. And the reason I recommend it is because, even though you didn't get the subtext, I don't think the subtext is necessary um, because it is an entertaining story, especially if you listen to the audiobook by John Cleese. And going into the book with (laughs) with a different mindset, I think, would change your experience on what you're going to take out of it. Yeah, you can go in there thinking about theology and, like, religion and stuff. But then you can, there's a lot of stories just about demons and angels. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was just one perspective of uh, the unseen war that's going on. And uh, I think that's why I 
also really enjoy it. I like those things that it, yeah, it could be in real life. Like it's just happening around us. You see, and it kind of brings a little bit of excitement to life. But uh, for those that aren't interested in religion, I think it's just a, a very fun correspondence between an incompetent employee and their, or an incompetent person and their mentor. And just because I want to mention it, um, after we finished this book, I did go onto Goodreads and I looked at some of the reviews because I was curious if there was anybody else who kind of felt like I did, if there was anybody who felt like you did. And one of the top reviews, like you can list a reason like who you'd recommend it to or why you'd recommend it. And this review was just like, every Christian should read this book because it's the truth. And I read it like that when I read it initially. And I was like, you know what? I would more broadly recommend it as well. Just like John said, it was, you don't have to necessarily analyze it for the subtext with the more religious tones. It really can just be taken as the humorous letters between two family members who happen to work together. I was just very interested to see that kind of recommendation because it was so strong and so clearly took the subtext of the book a little bit more strongly than say we did. Yeah. You you really are going to get what <laughs> what you put into the book. Yeah. Um, if you go in there thinking that this is like, oh my goodness, this is C.S. Lewis, like he's going to be preaching. Like, yeah, you're, you're going to get that. Yeah. Um, but if you go in there, just. If you're looking for a good time and a quick read, it's definitely something to pick up. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.